Hey everybody, welcome to Shit I Love with Jason Stewart, that's me, and my guest, my good pal, Leslie Jordan. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me yes. on Shit I Love. <laughs> well, you're one of the shits I love. I just love saying it. I just wanted to do Can it. you say shit on, on uh, network TV? I don't, yes, you can. Well, no, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I think some shows, maybe at 10 o'clock. I don't know. <laughs> I know they say fuck now all the time on FX. I mean, they say it like it's nothing, and they used to be so careful. Oh. And now I'm watching Pose and they say all these things and then they have the Travada ads. <laughs> and dear God. So this has been a year. This has really been a really good year. We've been friends a long time and I know you've gone in and out and up and down. Up and down. And this year it just, I don't know, I, th I think for 30 some odd years I've been the funny guy that came in with a zinger. That was my job uh -huh. in Hollywood. And I did really well. And then I reached the pinnacle by winning an Emmy for the funny guy that comes in with a zinger. And I On Will and Grace playing Beverly playing Leslie. Playing Beverly Leslie. And I started thinking, you know, maybe there's more. And I kind of began to branch out. I tried two Broadway bound shows over the last two or three years, neither of which made it to Broadway, and realized that is not it for me. Eight performances a week for very little money. You have to really have that. Well, it's got to be a good. It's got, number one. It's not. It's got to be. I would say to somebody, a play is a beginning, then and end. It's like a relationship. But you know, a movie or a TV show could be good, could be bad. Doesn't matter. You're in and out. And you, you know, we the play. You're married to exactly. So it has to be a play that you really want to do. I mean, if you were getting to do Angels in America or something brilliant, well, I got offered this show called Warhol Capote where had a pedigree like you would not believe. Um, Michael Mayer was directing, he did Spring Awakening and every opera in the world. Right. Rob Roth, who is a director as well, um, Disney handed him Beauty and the Beast when he was 26 years old and he's done everything since right. then. Rob is an Andy Warhol freak and found out that when Andy died, they had, they found 68 no, yeah, 68 90-minute tapes that said Truman. And they had had this love-hate relationship for years. Oh, I could see they were competitors in well, a way. Not, right? Andy stopped Truman from the time he was a teenager in Pittsburgh because he wanted to illustrate other voices, other rooms. And he began writing letters. And he would show up in New York and... And Truman's mother got drunk and went down and told, ran him off one time. And then they reconnected at Studio 54 and realized who they were. Anyway, it's this long. Rob Roth took all those sh um, uh, tapes and for almost over, gosh, maybe two years, just transcribed them down. And, and edited them. And, into yeah. a two-person show. Wow. And so I thought, wow. And it was Stephen Spinella. Playing Warhol. Oh my God! From I mean, Angels in America, one the Tony for one supporting and one best actor. I know my shit. And Steven Spinella and I went to um, the uh, American Repertory Theater in Boston, and we began our rehearsals. And I realized pretty early on, I wasn't up for it. It's really a hard thing for an actor to realize. I don't have this in me. Uh -huh. 68 pages of the most precise dialogue because Truman spoke the way he wrote. Uh -huh. And Rob had listened to these tapes and it drove him bananas if I even flip-flopped a word. Really? He, he was there. And it, he that, makes it, that makes it so, that makes it so difficult. Yeah, and, but it wasn't that really. It, Michael Bayer, I can't say enough about the two of them and how, how much they supported me. But, you know, all of a sudden you get into previews. We're ready to have an audience in three or four days. And I'm going up on lines. And, and they try to feed, you know. In your head, yeah. <laughs> it's like picking up taxi dispatches. <laughs> because it's, it's a Har Harvard's theater, but it's a college theater. Uh -huh. You know, they send everything in the world to Broadway. From, from a waitress to... The newest one is going to be Jagged Little Peel, which is Allison Moyette and Juno, uh, or Juno, the movie. Who wrote Juno? Adabla Cody. Yes. Anyway, to make a long story short, I sat them down and said, I don't have this in me. And they had already been calling from Will and Grace, so I sort of had an out in that scheduling. 
But I, to make a long story short, I tried that. I tried, you know, doing things like uh, American Horror Story. Anything came my way, hour longish. Yeah, but what's really interesting is I don't, I, I don't know necessarily agree with you. I, I, I think sometimes when the situation is, oh, that's, I always forget to turn off for those at home. Know that know this all the time that I forget to turn off my uh, email on the computer because I tape this on the computer. So now you guys know everything. <laughs> Um, I don't believe that you don't have it in you. I think that it's just different styles of working and somebody has to be open that this is the kind of artist that you are. And they made you, you know, want to be their kind of artist and you're your kind of artist. And that's all that is. And it also just, I'm not, um, Stephen Spinell even said to me at one point, he goes, listen, this is harder than baking. I've never bit off something like this because it was, it's really hard to explain. I think it will eventually make it to New York. I'm not sure where it is now. Dan Butler replaced me, uh -huh. who we know. You know I know, Dan. wonderful actor. And Dan, Dan could do Truman. I can't, you know, Truman wasn't funny. Truman was clever, but he was a bitter little man. <laughs> oh, very angry. And I was getting Sad. huge laughs because I, just what I do, and anyway, they had a different. It was it was a different style. A different it was it was different style, and they also took away my main ingredient as an actor, are props. I'm like I learned that from Lily Tomlin. Find some business. Oh God, yes. And they took it all away. They made it. A, so then, 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 <laughs> then you, what you're saying is wrong. It's not that you weren't up for it. Is that you guys didn't connect in terms of acting styles? Right. And that's. But I what think that what is. I was heading towards was. Then when this new show came my way called Cool Kids and I found myself back in the multi-cam world, I thought this is my home and this is what I can do really well for some reason, whatever that is. It's a little bigger, a little broader than, than this. Anyway, I, I'm home. I'm home for a while. Well, I think, I think I, I, I talk to so many actors and this is the thing about I love this about this show and I'm going to be really, really honest. I when I saw um, you in the help, that was a different side of you. Yeah, that was a different version of mm -hmm. who people think you are. Right. And you were working with a guy that adores you. Tell me his name. I forgot. Tate Taylor. Tate Taylor, and he is an old old friend, and he let you go. Mm -hmm. And he and you did a different version of a guy that maybe was closeted, maybe wasn't. Maybe was this just this guy that was a square peg living in a round world out there in the South in the, in, in the 60s. And you were wonderful. And it wasn't your usual thing. And I said to Tate early on, because the very first shot of that movie, the very first day was Emma Stone and I sitting across from a desk. And I, had, I didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. Easy A wasn't out. Um, and, right. And Tate kept telling me, you know. Oh, dear. Tate kept Everything is happening at my house. And Tate said to me, you know, she's going to be the next Julie Roberts. She's just, and I kept going over to Tate saying, she's not giving me much. And he said, well, let's see. And I said, but I don't know, I don't know what I'm playing. You know, I don't, I don't, Tate. I don't know what I'm playing. And finally, I came over one, two, three times because I can't say Because I'm just used to sitcom sort of Megan Mullally, just bam. And, and when I saw Emma Stone, by the way, on screen, 50 things going on in that little face I didn't even see across the table from her. She's uh -huh. an amazing actress. But I felt she was... Tate said, look, 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 Leslie, let me tell you what you're playing, okay? I'll sum it up for you. In the 60s in the South, every small town had one. <laughs> and I said, one what? He goes, that guy that's married with five children, but honey, you know. And that was all it took. I thought... Oh. See, and then you had it, and then you, and then you had it, and you had the character. So I, so I don't believe that. It's all about who you're working with, and I think after you hit fifty years old, you start to go, "Hey, I know what I want to do," and I think you have a lot more in you than you think. And I think that you know there, there are moments of different things. If you're working with right. someone like that guy, who you get to do a supporting role in a film. And it's something a little different. And if somebody gave you that opportunity to do something even more different, you would do it. I just, when I say I don't think I had it in me, was the memorization of 68 pages. Mm -hmm. I've always had problems with that. I can memorize dialogue like that. You tell uh -huh. me this. But when I have to, these were, these were, you know, and I divided the script before I got to Boston into 
If it was long, longer than three lines, I made it a speech. Uh -huh. There were 33 speeches. Dear Huge. God. 33 speeches. Pages of speeches. Where Truman would just talk, because they were both always drunk <laughs> and fucked up, the two of them. And so they would talk, and nothing connected to anything. Like, like what's her name, Fran, the funny lady that said the opposite of talk is not... Uh, is not listen for people like that. It's wait, and that's mm -hmm. how it was. Really, then is wait. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, I do. I agree to with you that I too probably have, but I don't have sixty pages of precise dialogue anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. I understand. I really don't. But that's okay. And the, the thing you're... was, I also thought maybe it's my antidepressant I take. Perhaps I won't take that. Well, that was a nightmare. There was a nightmare waiting to happen. And then I thought, well, perhaps it's that half an ambient that sometimes I take. I won't take that. Well, that's a nightmare in and of itself. It was just a really crazy time and being in Boston. And then the call came from Will and Grace, and I thought, oh, God, I really don't like that. So tell us about the Will and Grace experience. Was the part written for you? The part was written for um, Joan Collins. I'm not making this up. Which is exactly you. Well, it's, <laughs> they had written an episode, and I have to be very careful the way I uh, state You've this told me this story. Go ahead. I love it. I have to be very careful because I don't think I've told you the recent part where it was. Ooh. Um, uh, it appeared in some sort of English paper that I've been telling this story for 10 years, and I got not really a cease and desist, but I got a very stern letter from Joan's people saying it disparaged her good name and it was causing lessening her chances for uh, employment. And I thought, what? what? She's she said, an icon. She's a, my story, it was silly. But anyway, here's what they took, here's what they didn't like about the story. Joan was hired to play Beverly Leslie. Beverly Leslie was going to steal Rosario the Maid away from Megan Mullally's character. Karen. Karen. They were then going to, they wanted a dynasty cat fight over a billiard table, but it's similar to that, you know, dynasty cat fight. And there was going to be wig pulling, and they were going to pull each other's wigs off. And that's what a parent should have problems with. And so I, you know, get carried away in my stand up and go, they fired her ass. Well, maybe they did fire her. They fired her ass and hired me. No. But they, they anyway. It, the, 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 it was a, an audition. They didn't know me. They had never. I, I remember that I had auditioned for Max and David for Boston. Not public. I know which one. Comments. Is, comments. Yes, it was a, Yes. I had auditioned for them for that, but they didn't remember me. And um, I walked in. The story's crazy. I, I had. Uh, talked to my mother and my mother told me a story and had the story on my mind and I walked in chattering and they wanted someone who chattered. They wanted Southern. They wanted small. I mean, I just walked in and they were just like, you're it. Um, Did you even read? I don't. That would be a question because you know, the only one in the room was Joni. Marchinko. I love her. She She's was, the one that got me on the show. She was in the room. That was who was in the she room. She loves funny, interesting people. I just talked to her because she just had a birthday. She's wonderful, and she's yeah. still just, she's done so well since. Yeah. But she, that would be a question for her. I don't think I did. I think it was like walked in, chattering, and it's, you're it. Because <laughs> I don't remember a scene. What scene would I read? I don't remember that. So I had, they hired me for that one episode. And then uh, Billy Miller, who was my manager at the time, called and said, well, you scored a coup. They want you back. And Ellen DeGeneres is playing a nun. And it's sort of like the season um, cliffhanging thing or whatever. And then I just started doing them. I only did 12 over the years. Which people think I was just around a lot, but I wasn't. And uh, You have 15. 15. Up according to IMDb. 12, 30. Yeah, because I did two new ones. So you did twelve. You did thirteen, and then uh, two more. Thirteen. Well, one I was did a two 12. part. Two part what? was the finale. Right. Yes. Which made me cry. Which you died. Yeah. Well, but supposedly made... when they said you're coming back, I thought you flew out the window, and yet we thought you were dead. And then Max called me. Max called me because I got in big trouble because I didn't know. You're always in trouble. Well, no, I was in big trouble. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to say anything. 
Well, that's impossible. How are you not supposed to? The only way you're not going to say something it's is if you now. is if you don't know, or you're putting to a, a, you know a, a, you're not a shoe in on, prison. You're not supposed to Which, go on PBS radio, where, wherever I was, and say. And they said, "Is it coming back?" And I said, "Yes, it's coming back." And the next day, castmate Leslie Jordan Moore was one of the minor players, announces return, and I got this letter. And I knew it was Max. I love Max to death, but I, it was not from who it said it was from. It was one of the producers, but I said, this is Max, would you? Well, my phone rang. I was home with my mother in Tennessee, and I thought, I'm going to talk to him. And I wouldn't answer the phone, because I knew they said, Max, much next office is called I wouldn't answer the phone. And so when I finally got back, my my agents called and said, answer the phone. And Max called. We had this wonderful talk. And he said, um, I said, you can't bring me back. You wrote me that main letter and now you're going to, you killed me. And I'm going to go be on American Horror Story. Lady Gaga, I, I don't even want to be on your show. And all, all this stuff. And so he said, this is all he had to say to me. Well, we're not going to bring Beverly Leslie back. We're going to bring his evil twin, Leslie Leslie, <laughs> which was the original plan to bring me back. As, and, and see, Jack and Karen took my money when I flew, when I died. Oh, did they? I don't know if you remember that, but Jack inherited all my money. And Karen Stanley had died or something. And it just made up, I think, that, that finale I think they decided, let's just... It was the funniest thing I ever saw in my entire life. Really? When you flew out the window, <laughs> I just about fell on the floor. But a lot of things on these shows. I mean, on this show, also, both uh, both of them had got married and had children. And then they decided not to do that when they brought it back. So this happens. You and their know. children had met in a dorm room next to each other. I right. can't remember. So they just picked... But you know what was interesting? I didn't come back till episode six. And I walked in and... The best one of the best compliments I've been given was Megan came up to me after we did our first scene, and originally I was going to come in in a motorized wheelchair. <laughs> that would have been great. Who needs to walk and remember where you're going? I was going to come in with a motorized wheelchair, zip, 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 and I could we couldn't make it work with the set or something. But Benji was going to be, you know, kind of riding on the motorized wheelchair with me. But anyway, Benji's even, your supposed boyfriend. Even. My business associate, but even Jim, um, Jim, Jim Burroughs said, and they're back because we really got last. But anyway, Megan came up to me and she said, you know, for six episodes, I've had Karen. I've always had Karen. You know what I mean? But I really feel with this pattern that Karen's back. And I thought, oh, my God, that's such a sweet thing to say. She's brilliant on the show. Cannot be more unlike this character. Mm -mm. I did, too, in the late... Uh, I think it was the late 90s, early 2000s. I don't remember when I did them, I think. And uh, just to actually end up on that show, because they edit and edit and edit and cut and cut and cut and change and paste. And wow. it, it was probably the hardest show to work on. Were you right in front of the audience? Right. It scared me to death. You know, and I ended up only left on one show with half a line, basically, after doing two. Oh but uh, if it wasn't for Joni, I just thank her so much. Those residual checks came in. They, they, and they kept me in the in the, the titles of the show. So if you keep you on the credits and you get paid. Then you get paid. Yeah, people don't know that. Help me a couple of years get my insurance. There you go. You know, we're going to take a break just a second and I'm going to do my uh, commercial here. Got to pay the rent. Your home away from home is Silver Lake. It's called Casa Crawford. It's in strolling distance of both Echo Park and Silver Lake. Casa Crawford is the perfect bed and breakfast. You'll just love it. It's miles to a couple miles, three miles from downtown in Hollywood. You get a very large bedroom that has beautiful original artwork and a view that's just gorgeous. Call my friend Scott at 323-663-1664. That's call Scott at 323-663-1664. Airbnb with Scott Crawford at Casa Crawford. Thank you, Scott, for being our sponsor. Um, so now... It's the, you know, you did Roanoke on American Horror Story, which was the season before last. Mm -hmm. And you had a really nice, and you were nominated for some award, weren't you, for one of the seasons, um, which was sort of cool. I'm trying to remember where, here, do you remember what it was? Or do you mm -hmm. even know? Mm -hmm. 
Oh God! I probably did too. Science did. fiction, fantasy, and horror films. That's a pretty big. That's a Saturn Awards. You were nominated yeah. for best guest performer on uh, for Roanoke. You don't. You didn't know that? No. How wonderful. Well, it was two years ago, honey. <laughs> it was a year and a half ago. It was. In, uh, <laughs> it was for. Uh, yeah. You don't know this. Mm -mm. That was another one where, on on Roanoke, which was the series before the last one. You walk to, you come to work the very first day, and the very first scene is Cuba Gooding Jr., Angela Bassett, Academy Award winner, Academy Award winner, Kathy Bates, Academy Award winner, and Sarah. Angela's only nominee. Oh, and Sarah Paulson, who will have one. Emmy, Emmy nominee. Emmy, Emmy. Emmy winner, yeah. And they say the very first day, we're going to block shoot because of time and so we're tell people what block shoot means block shoot means they're going to shoot the entire day's worth of work your way and then turn the camera around and shoot the entire and in an hour long you don't shoot chronologically you shoot by location so every one of those scenes could be popping up throughout the episode at different points and it had nothing to do with my acting abilities. Once again, I thought I had not memorized this because normally you have a lot of time, you know, with these hour longs. You go, you walk in and you'll have speech after speech after speech, but it's never a full day's work. And they put that camera on me and I tried, I tap danced every way I could. I wrote things on pieces of paper. I wrote, I had it on Angela Bassett was across from me. And finally, midway through the day, I said, I don't think I got these pages. Because that happens a lot with um, American Horror Story because they, you don't get scripts. I don't. They don't, I don't want you to know. know. They don't want you to know the whole thing. I get kind of where they tell me things. Like, like when I did Coven that one time, they said to me, you've got a scene with um, uh, Francis Alexis Conray. No, but this was with uh, oh, um, uh, Precious. I had a scene with Precious. Um, Gabby. G Gabby Sidide. Yeah. I said to her, I'll just call you darling. I couldn't reach. I said, what's your name? She said, by the way, are you gay? I said, are you black? <laughs> what What have you? We're, it's pretty obvious here. But I had somebody this. says that when somebody <laughs> says that to me, I always say, no, I'm just gay on the weekends. I'm too gay to be a gay every day. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. But anyway, to make a long story short, I had had a, 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 a with Gab with Gabby, my scene was they basically said to me, you know, she's been raped, she's in bed, and you need to do this and this. Well, when I saw the episode, she was like, ass raped by an alien. You know what I mean? Don't you think that would have changed? I mean, not that. I mean, rape is rape, but, right, but it would be more of an incredulous kind of what, as opposed to oh. But anyway, they did that to me again, on, where I didn't know what was going on. And Angela Beth said, I said, I don't think I got these plans. And she goes, yes, you did. You were supposed to be on my side. But um, She wasn't happy? No, she was fine. She just she just thought through my bullshit. Uh -huh. But I was trying to buy time. I was just, it was just, I really, really, really have had problems lately. With me Do you have problems with memorization? Um, it, it, some things I learn right away and some things I take longer. But I always, I, I know that it takes me a little longer. So I really work So on you it. really prepare. I have somebody for you yeah. to help you. Really? Yeah. When we're done with the show, I'll, I have a great guy named Matt Schneider who's really, really helped me oh, learn yeah. things in a completely new way. i tell you who's amazing that I'm working with right now is Vicki Long. She and she has tricks like block block, you know, like So now let's talk about the new shows. Okay. So the new show is you have a new sitcom on which network? It's CBS? On Fox. Fox, I'm sorry, Fox. It's um it was a it it came about because we shot a pilot like Thanksgiving of last year. It's the guys that wrote It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Which I love. I did an episode of that. Wasn't that a fun show? Did you ever do work on that? No, but I Danny walked DeVito. in. Danny DeVito. Yeah. I, Danny, it's not Danny. This is the three boys. Right. Danny DeVito was one of the stars of that show. But those kids, Charlie, Glenn, <laughs> I walked in and I thought, as a gay man, these are, because they're my bosses now. It's their production company. Wow. And they've had such a, 
wonderful track record with 20th that we thought this pilot really has a good shot. And um, it was uh, Charlie Day wrote it. And then they had that little production company. And she comes around too, the girl on it. She she's had a series too called right. the Nick. Yes. I think it might have got canceled. But anyway, they're all in on it. But that that's the kind of energy. And then you've got these four old actors, me, Vicky Lawrence, David Allen Greer, who's the youngest of all of us, and acts like the oldest, and Martin Mull. Uh. And we're in a retirement community and it's Golden Girls on Crack. But you know what the cool part about it is? It's an aging gay man. We're in a we're in a retirement village in uh, not like a retirement home, you know, where you buy your little in Phoenix, and it's an aging gay man, a woman of a certain age, an aging African American, and an aging white straight hippie, and we're best friends. And it which one are you? Um, I play the aging white hippie. No. <laughs> but I think that's kind of cool that it's not, that's not what this show's about. This show's about aging and friendship and... Um, is it real? Does it have a real component? Is it in front of an audience? Or? It's in front of an audience, but it's very broad. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's you know, you don't, you, it's the kind of comedy you don't really see much in. I mean, it's broad. Mm -hmm. I mean, talking, you know, we get arrested, we we drop people's ashes, we... we. So it sounds like Golden Girls or Lucy? Or? It's Golden Girls on crack. And the pilot, I'm so proud of it because um, I, we were in New York for the upfronts, and then we were in Vegas for... I mean, Fox is pushing this show like crazy. It's got a lot of... It's got a big cast. Kim Fields from Facts of Life is in it. No, no, no. That's Living the Dream. Oh, that's Living the Dream. That's the other one. Well, that's the Spanish one. Yeah. In Spain. Oh, I'm getting your... Look, Jesus Christ. There's so much... And this show is called... Cool Kids. Cool Kids. On Fox. Wow. What it... So the... And it's picked up for a season. For how many? They're saying 13. But... We've been given a schedule. I mean, and we went in, <laughs> we went into shoot publicity for the entire year, and they had us looking right at the camera and saying, "For the big season finale on Cool Kids," and "Hey, Merry Christmas from the Cool Kids," la la la. So I. I so now you've told all this. <laughs> but it's thirteen. We have been picked up for thirteen episodes. Wow. And what's, but, what's Vicky Lawrence like? She's got to be close to seventy, right? No, she's sixty-eight. She doesn't mind me saying that, I think. Yeah. Because we're trying. She. God, she looks good. And you talk about solid. And she gets to play, her character is a kind of a boozy, loud mouth kind of. What happens is the three of us play cards with our buddy every day in the pilot. And then the, our buddy dies, our big Lebowski. And we're looking at each other saying, what are we going to do with this seat? I mean, here we are. He was the fun one. But I said, we're going to keep it empty in his honor. Bam, she sits down. So you can't sit there. So I sit anywhere I want. That's exactly what used to happen at my grandmother's uh, in the cafeteria. When I go visit my grandmother, she'd say, I'd say, you know, I'd say, Grandma, can I sit here? She says, and then her, her friend Frida, who was like 90 something, would say, No, you can't sit there. That's Maud's seat. And then my grandmother Molly would sit there. And then this other woman, Teresa, would sit. I think with them. And then there was this Maud seat and no one was allowed to. I said, Maud, Maud never comes down. And she goes, but she might. <laughs> and you know, and I thought, so I, I would pull a chair, sit off to the side and she'd always look at me and she'd go, you're such a nice young man, Jason. Her name was Frida. She'd say, you're such a nice looking young man. But do you have a girlfriend? I said, no, I'm gay. She goes, oh no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. And I'd say, how, why am I not? She said, well, you don't have an ascot. <laughs> And my grandmother would say, don't say you're gay, you'll get me kicked out of here. And that's kind of, anyway, this is, when I saw the pilot, what they did that I thought was so clever, the acting is so solid, the writing is so solid, and then to put the whipped cream on top of everything, they found YouTube clips of old people doing the funniest things you've ever seen. Like jumping on a trampoline with his um, walker. Do they make you do that? No. They show them. It just clips in between. It's hard to explain, but you laugh nonstop. You can't so wait a second. So you guys are pretty young to be in a retirement hotel. Well, it's not a retirement hotel. It's like one of those places, you know what I mean, like where you buy your home. 
Oh, um, so it's it's, it's, so it's over fi- over fifty living. Yes, over fifty living. But we do meet every day in the rec hall and eat together and everything. And you're you have a boyfriend? No, not no. Uh-uh. Yes, we have. Well, I mean, we've had a thirty minute pilot. That's all we've had, and just set up the what's coming. <laughs> You need someone closer to your age group so you don't embarrass yourself like you do a will and grace. Um. Well, we'll see. It's very, very exciting. The other show I have is called Living the Dream. Now, this is in Spain. This is the one that was on my mind that when we t- when we emailed. You said, I'm in Spain doing a show. Now, what's that about? Well, here's what happened. I have... Do you um, speak Spanish? No, it's not. It's, uh, it's supposed to be Florida. Here's what, here's what happened. It's so crazy. I went to um, Tybee Island, which is Savannah, Georgia, last year, and shot six episodes of a series for Sky TV that is called Living the Dream. Uh, An English family takes their money and moves to Florida, and they want to pursue the dream. And I'm kind of this shyster, and they end up with a trailer park that I live in. And I... I'm one of the few American castmates. So when they went to shoot the second season, because it's very popular apparently, they said we're going to make Spain because we can hire a crew for 75% less because of American unions and everything over there. And I went to the um, Marbella, Spain, Marbella, and shot six more episodes of the second season. So we're in our second season of Living the Wow. So how are you going to do both? That's going to be an interesting... It's perfect. Because oh. they shoot May, June. We shoot May, June. Now, it, it's an hour long. What they do in England is they'll do six hour longs. It's a comedy, but it's mainly about this family adjusting to America. You know, there's so many stories and movies of us going over there, but very few of them coming here and trying to figure it all out. And wow. I'm, I'm helping them negotiate the waters. Wow. And it's, um, you know. So what do you do with your dog, your little doggy? I fly my twin sister, one of my twin sisters, out. One of your twin sisters? How many do you have? They're twins. They're oh, twins. Oh, oh, I thought how many do you have? And she flies out and stays with me. Now, what is, what is Kim Kim Fields play? She plays the neighbor, but they... They didn't bring her back second season, and it had more to do with um, scheduling, I think. Because what happened was they shot the second season, so they had to have a new... She's the neighbor. She did nudity, Miss Fields. Really? What a body on her. Who knew? On on this show? Tootie, yes. A little bit. She's swimming. She's got this rocking body. She's not our little Tootie anymore. But she, they couldn't keep, okay, so we went to Spain. The family had to move to a new neighborhood because they couldn't replicate that house we used for them. And so anyway, they had to get a new neighbor. So also on, on your, what I call the docket for you, you did another Assorted Lives movie. Now they are just chucking these out. This is a sort of, a very sorted wedding. And how was that to go back to playing Brother Boy after, you know, so many years? 20 of, years. Oh, God. 20 years. Dale Shores called me and said, I've raised the money for a sequel to the movie. See, we did, people think we did more movies. We did Logo as a series. You did one season. One season. So we did 13, you know, of those, or 20, I can't remember how many, but there's only been two features, the first one and the second one. So Dale called me and said, I've raised the money. And I go, it's been 20 years. What, did you raise a dollar a week? And if you think (laughs) I'm going to shoehorn my fat ass, back into that orange jumpsuit. The main thing was, <laughs> I didn't want to shave. I really didn't. Because I'm so hairy, I'm like a monkey. And I didn't want to shave. And he said, we, we can work around it where they couldn't. But anyway, he said, oh, I sold that uh, I sold that uh, jumpsuit on eBay. <laughs> they raised money for the movie. You know, he raised almost a million off fans. Wow. With that crowd. So people still want to see the movie. And, and, and we what? couldn't get Olivia Newton-John. She wasn't available. And oh. so we got Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg, and we shot in Winnipeg, Canada. Whoopi Goldberg, How yes. Did, wow, what? Now, what was she? She like? was a fan of the original movie. What was she like? She was fun. She took a bus. 
That's what I hear. 25 hours, two drivers. She has a big tour bus. Right. They drove her in, and she wasn't even there for six hours. We really, talk about block shoot. We had shot all the way around her. Um, what it is, is this. So she spent more time on that tour bus. Or, <laughs> but, it's not a tour bus. It's an RV, isn't it? Something. It's huge. Yeah. But I went running over there, and I said, Whoopi, you remember me? And she said, uh-uh. I said, I was in drag. I said, well, I'm not in drag. You know, I'm I'm Leslie Jordan. I was on The View three times. She goes, I don't remember you. And I said, I was on there. With <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> don't, please don't pretend. I said, please please don't I was on there with Lily Tomlin. Don't you remember you and I did? She goes, baby, I don't remember you. <laughs> she just is, she's as real as they come. Karen Johnson. Uh-huh. She's Karen Johnson. That's her real name, yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember once that um, she was at the comedy store, and I was going up there to he- see her show in the belly room. I had heard that she was really terrific, and she had this show called The Spook Show. No. And one comedian said, where are you going? I said, I'm going up to see this this gal named Whoopi Goldberg. She's doing this show called The Spook Show. And she said, oh, yeah. Well, I heard she was not she was not very pretty, and she's not funny. And I thought, and she said she was, she said, I hate to say, I speak ill of the dead. This comedian, Hilda Vincent, who passed away. She said she's ugly and not funny. And I thought, that's a terrible thing to say. And I didn't see it. I didn't go up. And I thought, I don't want to see not funny. And I so regret that because I, I'm probably one of, I'm a major fan. I think that she's so. I wonder why she doesn't do what she did, though. The first time I saw Whoopi was that Mike Nichols saw her. She did another show around 10 years ago. A redo. She did, did do another she? one on Broadway. Yeah, she did another one on Broadway. And those characters where you're laughing but at she's the such little a, girl. But she's that, such an incredible actress. She really is. She's got a movie, a Tyler well, Perry movie coming out. This she's is a big the story that she told. She was Whoopi Cushion. Right. So, and then she wanted to up, make it a little classier. So for a year or so, she was Whoopi Cushion. <laughs> she wanted it to be a little bit more ethnic. So she became Well, she said, all the Jews, I want the Jews to like me, you know. And then, of course, Spielberg did, and that that was the end of that. And you got to work with Bonnie Bedelia and Dale Dickey, who I just adore. Best actress I know. Just, Dale Dickey is the best actress I know. See, I think you, and Alec Moppa was in it, too. Wonderful. Oh, my God, he and I have a scene that you will wet your pants. I call him, I, I, I get mad at him, and I ad-lib this, because we added this one part. I got mad at in the scene. He was supposed to be screaming at me and, and telling me, listen, see, the thing is that Brother Boy, my character, is doing old drag. You know what I mean? He said, you got to get those high heels into the 20th century. He's the queen that runs the bar. Mm-hmm. He's real mean to me. You need to do carry underwood or something new. And he calls me all these nights, and I said, listen, to me, you sing a boy's thing. <laughs> he goes... I'm Philip. Is he I'm Filipino. Filipino. He goes, I'm Filipino, and I'm from Phil and I'm from something. Philadelphia. Because I said, "Listen, you, you sing a poor sling." <laughs> anyway. Did they leave it in the movie? Yes. Well, that's a smart man, Del Shores. He's a Alex Mop. Alec Mop. I mean, oh my gosh, that Rick. first one person show of his called No Fats. No fans, no fans, no, no agents. agents. Yeah. Was just brilliant. Well, he he certainly uh, had the touch on what was going on in the gay community at that time. I think he's wonderful. And uh, Carolyn Ray was in it also. Carol Cook. I mean, just some incredible people. Carol Cook did. Um, I talked. Did she to wear that her. weird makeup, that kabuki makeup. Yes, but do dear you know God, that? I saw her in something. <laughs> I thought, honey, does someone can but someone she... just say to you, you know? <laughs> You look like you're dead, <laughs> oh, the walking dead. <laughs> she opened two or three nights ago at, not Feinstein's, what's it called? Under 54? In Studio New York? 54. Oh, Studio 54. She sold the place to the rafters. She's 94. Dear God. Well, sold, then let her wear any makeup she wants. Sold the place to the rafters. And, they, and my friend Mary was her stage manager and said, Leslie, she doesn't miss a trick. I have to help her on stage, but she's nice. The mind is still there, and the body, the body is, uh, it's what the body does. It's just a shame because we are so wonderful when we are where we are, you know, where we are, you know, 
in our minds as we get older. There's, we're so, I feel like I'm, I'm the best me right now. I feel like I'm ready to do Good my, for you. my best work. Me too. You know, you know, I really feel ready to do that. So hopefully someone will hire I'm me. I'm 63. Oh my God, I won't say how, how old I am <laughs> because it just scares me. I, I say that, you know, I, I, I'm willing to admit that I'm 50, but it's taken me nine years to... So plus tax and deposit. Yes. 50 with a little shipping and handling. <laughs> it's taken me forever, you know, just to say that out loud. Um, I love Bonnie Bedelia. She, when she did um, a Heart Like a Wheel and played Shirley Muldowney, I thought, and, and just her and so many wonderful, she's somebody that I think really should have got more. She's just such a wonderful actress. You know, she's there's people like her and Del Dickey that just work so much, there's like no time for the I don't know what it is. Where well, Dale really has since she won that. Uh, she won a spirit award for, for, for Winter Bone. Yeah, she was even she even had a part of the Guild Trip at Streisand. You know, I mean, she's just popped up in everything. everything. Yeah, I we have know. the same agent. She took uh, me to her agency. Oh, uh, really? Oh, good for her. Well, you should because I know that 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 really probably made a big change for you. It did in your life. I uh, just uh, adore them. So. Uh, What's next? Are you still doing your stand-up show, The Pink Carpet? I do. I've, I, ta I talked, um, the guy that books me and all that, uh, uh, Don McClare, I'm going to bring him with me because he started panicking because I'm kind of his bread and butter in many ways because I do 44 venues a year. That's a lot. I do. And so when... But now are you doing pieces of all the shows? You're doing... I just do whatever I want. I call it Leslie Jordan Exposed. And I have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in between, there's no telling. I've never had a complaint. <laughs> the only one that ever complains is my dear friend Rick Murray from uh, P-Town, who has the crown and anchor. And every year he goes, now what's this new show called? I go, oh, God, it's not a new... I, and I'll just make up a name for him. It's called Full of Gin and Regret. Oh, I can bark at that. Same damn show. <laughs> then he'll say, what's your show? I mean, I won't even be on the ferry out of there before he's already, what's your new show? Um, um, this one's called uh, Stories I Can't Tell Mama. Oh, that's a good every year. We just make up names for Rick Murray. But do you they, know you... Do they make you go on the street? <laughs> no, not anymore. Oh, that was the word. That, that's I did a, for years. Of course I did. I did. Too, we all did. And I just couldn't do it anymore. I felt like an old whore. I know. You know, I actually wore my underwear, walked down the street <laughs> and with a car following me once, in a leather jacket and underwear and boots, as Madonna played like a virgin in the background. Or The like best story is a, a what's-her-name's story, and I'm going to steal it. Whose? Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> Opens for Roseanne. She's uh, Jackie B. Jackie B. Have you heard her P-Town story? Loved her. Loved oh, you her. know her P-Town no, story? No, tell me. She, I, she, she won't tell, do my show. I've called she her. She can couple. tell it better than me. I keep calling She's her. She's out there on the streets selling her show. Oh, yeah. In the daylight. And a family of four standing there just gawking. She goes, okay, you got your eyes full. Now move it. Because she's trying to pass And she's in drag. She's in drag. It's funny they just keep... Then they pulled out their cameras, start taking pictures. See, so she said, move it. Finally, she said, get that. The fuck out of here, okay? I'm trying. This little twelve-year-old boy stepped forward and said, "You can't talk to us like that." She leaned down and said, "Listen to me. Now listen close. You either get the fuck out of there, and we'll take that cotton candy you have, and we'll ram it up your ass." She walked off stage that night. You take the cotton candy and what? I'm gonna ram it up your ass. She said that to the <laughs> kid. Oh my god. Whatever he had, and so cotton candy taffy. I can't remember what it was. She said. She walked off stage and the cops were there. Really? And the cops said, Miss Pete, did you or did you not tell a 12-year-old boy you want to ram some goddamn existence? It was a snow cone. <laughs> it was a snow cone. <laughs> whatever, whatever they got wrong. Anyway, I just think that's the funniest story ever. Now she, Miss Pete, does not do PT anymore. Really? <laughs> Well, you know what's so funny is I saw her do a monologue once of Nancy Kelly's where she pretended totally serious. To I think she's a brilliant actor. Oh, she is. And Kent is his name. Is his you know what? She opens for Roseanne for years and years. Yeah. To walk out 
into that crowd, look at the way she looks and handle all that. I asked her one time, I said, you know what? I'm having problems. I don't, I don't like working in front of drunks. It bothers Who me. Who does? And I don't know how to handle it. She said, let me show you. She said, when, uh, when they act out, you just tell them, you walk up to them and you say, shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> really? She said you'd call them out and you'd tell them behave. But uh, she's dear. God. <laughs> well, God, this has been lovely. Okay. This has been absolutely lovely. So the two shows are Living the Dream. Living the Dream. Sky TV and which Now is, TV. Which Sky is, and Now TV. Which is going? They're going to hold. We went up against the, the one of the biggest shows in England right now. They cannot get enough of it. Is I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Really? Which you did, right? No, I did. Big celebrity, big, celebrity, big brother, which is one of the top shows. And I thought it would open doors, and it didn't. You know, I thought this is going to open doors for me to go over there, and it just didn't. Well, I don't, I don't think the same people who watch. I'm, Big Brother are going to be asking you to be in the new <laughs> Merchant Ivory film, darling, with Dame Maggie, who hasn't even watched her own Downton Abbey's. But she, but that's called Living the Dream, and they're going to put that in, uh, put that off for the fall, I think, till January. So the second season of Living the Dream. Um, was, and Cool Kids uh, premieres September 28th on Fox. And our, our, run, our lead in is Tim Allen. Uh, ABC, Alaska, uh, Alaska, uh, Last Man Standing. Yes, uh -huh. I, I saw him the other day, and he had told a bunch of us that he was uh, his show was coming. I've never met him. I ran up to him at the front of the room. I said, "Mr. Allen, my name is Lester Jordan, and I think it's because of you that we got picked up." He goes, "Give me some damn money." I said, "No." I'm <laughs> he said, "No, give me some damn money." <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> But that's what it, it's it's hand in hand with our show. I mean, I really think that's going to be our audience. Um, so I have a feeling you'll have a bigger audience. Maybe. <coughs> oh, I hate this one. I get a little cough right before Randy. Anyway, but thank you so much for being on the You're show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I just adore you. Thank you, and I adore you. Everyone, take care. Until next time.